All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another edition of Shabbat Lounge. This is Matt. And Jake. Well, and we just kind of wanted to start off and remind you that uh, there are multiple ways to find us. This first one is uh, Sabbath Lounge in Spotify. So check us out in Spotify. Uh, there's also a website, if I can click over to the tab. And so that's the Sabbath Lounge we website. So I actually own sabbathlounge.com and I started off with it's a Yahush it's yahushua.com that's it's both the same thing. And so you'll find links to all the different things we have here as well as some articles uh, from uh, you know different things uh, m most of the time it's things that I've written um, some and eventually and there is at least a, one thing he, Jake has done Hebrew Hammer is in here. Um, and you can go back and look. There's a search bar. You can go look at previous posts and things. And I'm sure Jake will eventually write some things that go in here. Um, and but but that's that's that. There's a Twitter page. And so if you are um, a Twitter person, um, I have 758 tweets in Sabbath Lounge. And uh, well, I'd like more followers. Please follow sabbath lounge there and uh, we have a can we be honest and just other things there and then we also have a facebook page sabbath lounge um and uh, so we'd appreciate you liking us here and uh sharing that with somebody you know that would be uh, that would be fantastic so i wanted to start off kind of just we're talking about current events today jake and um jake you said tell me what you remember about this uh this is the chosen and uh so i'm going to turn the volume down and and um play a second of that so what what did you so what did you learn about the chosen so uh yeah my wife ran across this a while back when it was still in the they just had their pilot out and it's uh the birth story of yeshua and uh it was really well done we watched it you know it's hard to find things that you can watch with the kids that is accurate to the bible and that was one of the things that having we, to go back and explain everything now wait a minute that didn't yeah, really happen like that right because everything no. you have is is like that it's skewed and twisted and just not accurate but the way they did the story was and you know we pulled up our Bibles and followed along with it. Very accurate, very close to the actual story. I mean, sure, some liberties, but I mean, sure. they're, make, they're making but, a, a show. Well, and there's so many things we don't know right. about Yeshua. I mean, there's just volumes. And then in the Bible itself says that, you know, there's not enough books that could contain the things he did. So, I mean, right. there's just there's just so many things we just don't know what he did. Right. And this kind of filled in the gaps. Yep. And it's uh, and not in a way where it's like skewing right. orthodoxy or any you know or doctrine or anything mm -hmm. like that. But definitely you know well done. You could tell they they did it with a purpose and spent their time with it to make it right. Mm -hmm. and real good. And then after that, we noticed that you know there were oh there's they got seasons out and we tried to find some of those that we could and we found uh, maybe the first couple episodes of the first season out mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's just really well done yeah well and now you know they, they have eight um eight episodes completed and i uh, highly recommend uh, you can download this app and then this app will work on any media player that you have just excuse me in our house we use the roku player and uh or roku roku Ro roku roku or roku <laughs> So potato potato so <clears throat> it'll go right to that and um and so it, it i think it's a unique app because because it seems to go with anything any streaming any way you stream it can talk to it so and then you watch it for free and then they ask you to pay it forward eventually and for like 15 bucks you can contribute and you're helping to fund they want to make as many as eight seasons. I think they've already started funding season number four. So they've had tremendous success. I think the view count last I looked at was like 26 million people have watched this. Wow. Uh, which is, it's pretty amazing. The whole concept, I like how they're funding it. 
Um, and the other, you know, fun fact about it is they did shoot it here in North Texas, which is kind of fun, just uh, not far from us here. And uh, they use Lake Benbrook and a little place uh, out at uh, Peace or Poolville and Weatherford um, area. So, um, but if you have not watched it, I, we can't recommend it enough. So it's uh, it's just fantastic, and you should tell everybody you know, and you should watch it for free, and then you should you should help fund it. I mean, why not help people tell this story? I can't think of a better story to tell, and um, especially in times of all this, you know, I think it's a you know, yeah, especially timely, especially uh, we we have a tendency to to rag on the movie industry and say, why don't they make more accurate, you know, family friendly and mm -hmm. Bible related stories. And then they come out and they're always real preachy and terrible and not, and not entertaining. But, you know, so when it, when something like that comes along, you know, you got to support it. Yeah. And that's how more of that kind of thing will be, be made. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and there's the pay it forward thing. You know, they've funded uh, season one, two, three, and partial into four. And uh, there's how much they've raised. And uh, so, you know, they have different different levels you can pay it forward. So if you're poor like me, the $15 option was pretty good. You know, if, uh, you know, there's even a $100,000 option in there. So I'm sure there's a lot of our listeners that uh, will probably be They're interested in that, that $100,000 right. option. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're bound to have a, a bunch of those. So, but as we continue to talk about current events, so Jake, this week, I, you know, I'm out and about um, my social distancing. What is this thing called? Is it social distancing? What is social that called? distancing. Uh, well, this, um, uh, what do I call it? Chronication. Uh, what else do you call it? Um, That's about the the extent of my calling it mm -hmm. coronation sure so um, um or medical martial law yeah. whatever you want to say here hide in place hide in place shelter in place shelter in place right. so and it's bug in bug in and it's affected you quite a bit because you don't go to work every day you Correct. work at your home yeah my commute has dwindled to about three minutes if I'm shuffling my, well, got to take care of the chickens, and then by then I can get out over to work. Do you dress, or do you like wear your underwear and slippers it while you're working? depends on the night before. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a long night the night before, then, you know, I snooze only a few times, and then, oh, I have a meeting coming up. I better run over to the computer. Mm-hmm. Oh, whatever, you know. And do sometimes. you do you mute your camera or do you? I do the sticky note over the oh, over uh -huh. the camera. Mm -hmm. Although, I've I've been trying this new look. I've gone back to my my Jinko pants and my flannel shirts and a two ear flapper cap, uh, camo style, and it's. You know, it's a good look. It goes well with the beard. I bet. And I've been I've been toying with the idea of I should peel that that uh, sticky note off my webcam mm -hmm. during one of my f meetings and just kind of see how that goes. But, you should. You should. Yeah. You find out who your real <laughs> who your real friends are. Well, my yeah. See if I'm employed the next day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they well, can't tell me what to do. No. Can they? Well. As I, uh, I've gone out and talked to people and I'm in uh, the outdoor world and landscaping and uh, people still want uh, to uh, to design spaces and change up things around their house. And so they still call me out to come uh, help figure out things like that. And this week I had some interesting conversations. One of them was with a chiropractor and he had called me out to uh, to look at a few things and he was having a discussion with me about COVID and he was just like, Matt, the, it's not what they tell you. And, you know, and this guy, you know, most of the, Gasp. Are, yeah, most of our <laughs> clients aren't uh, into conspiracies. Um, but he was like, yeah, he said, I work in the hospital district and the hospitals are empty. There's no one at the hospital. The parking lot's empty. They're laying nurses off and, 
there's empty hospital beds and there's just nothing going on there. And, um, yeah, for every picture of a, uh, of a completely overflowing hospital, there's 10,000 empty ones. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he said that there were some cities that he had heard of, you know, of course everyone says, you know, that I've heard this, right. But, um, in another city that were, um, you know, possibly going bankrupt because the hospital can't pay their bills because everything shut down, all the surgeries shut down, you know, all those things were making it work, paying the bills. Yeah. And now they, they're just shutting the door because they can't, can't fund anything. So I thought that was interesting. And then, um, the same guy, well, I had, uh, I had uh, talked to another guy and he said his uh, somebody in his family was a respiratory therapist in another town, and um, same thing that uh, you know he's like if this thing is so terrible and people can't breathe, you would think that respiratory therapists would be very busy and yeah. high demand. He's like she's at home and there's no work. In fact, they told her maybe a couple months she's going to have off here because there's nothing to do. There's no patients. There's no work. And he's like, that didn't add up. He's like, something is not right. And then this, this guy is a guy that also takes all his flu shots and takes the vaccine. And he's saying that. So it's kind of interesting. And so I'm going to take a sidebar here for a minute that, you know, we would encourage you to, to pray with us that the eyes of uh, of America will be opened and that through these things, more and more people will open their eyes to how they've been deceived. Cause you know, I think there's a great opportunity for people to start waking up to that. There's a lot of deception out there. Yeah. I think there's a lot of uh, sheep and goat separating. Going yes. On. Yes. And that brings up a great, that is an excellent point. Sheep and goat, because you know, a lot of people are fearful about this and I look at this, I'm like, this is, that's a good thing. It's a refining. It's 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 opportunity for you to figure out what you really believe and and where you are on some issues. And it, it's it is going to separate some people quick. It, right. I mean, it's already doing it. Yeah. So um, and then the other thing, uh, one of these guys also talked to me about this study here, and so I went and looked it up. And um, so this is the NCBI, which is the U.S. National Library of Medicine. Actually, I don't know how, the, how those <laughs> acronyms work, but National Institutes of Health. They put these two things together, I guess, and somehow get in CBI. So, but anyway, it seems like a legitimate source. I found other things and I've quoted it before, but um, this is an article published. When did you say it was published, Jake? 2009. 2009. And so the gist of it, I won't bore you with the whole thing because it's like really long, like real long. You can, I mean, it's. If you're into it, you can read it. That's right. You got, you got eyes. You can read We're it. We're not going to tell you what to think. Yes. <laughs> and so, but you know, the gist of it, he was telling me that during the Spanish flu, not the Spanish fly, that's a way different thing. So actually, I don't even know what wow. that is. <laughs> Isn't that the, the Beastie Boys? <laughs> I think that's the BC Boys song. That's that. I don't know. You're on your own there. Yeah, it's a BC Boys song from License to Ill. <laughs> so, um, not that I can don't. Not that I <laughs> say you should listen to them, but I have. So, um, anyway, with the Spanish flu uh, it was back a long time ago in uh, the early 1900s, and uh, what they did is the, they filled up all the hospitals. And when the hospitals filled up, they put them in tent cities. And then what they started noticing is these doctors and nurses were coming in and they're like, hey, all these guys in the tent city, they're recovered. They're healthy. They're home. Well, they're not here. And the people in the hospital, they've been here the whole time. And we've had people coming in and out of these tent cities in, got better, went home. And we still have the same people that continue to be sick in the hospital and they're not getting any better. So they came to the conclusion that there's a direct correlation between sunlight exposure and air. So Jake, have you ever heard of such a thing? I've heard of sunshine. Yes. Sunshine. I've also heard of air. Yes. Coincidentally, yeah. but no, yeah, I've, I've heard and and they'll even tell you on the, on the newspapers mm -hmm. that, that the sunlight 
actually is helpful in this yeah. case. I mean, I, I don't know a lot of things where some sunlight and fresh air doesn't help you. Mm -hmm. But in this case, right, uh, I think they even harassed Trump about saying, well, you know, after a minute, it's this virus is gone. And, you know, when it's affected by sunlight mm -hmm. in open air situations and yet everything's still shut down. Yeah. Yeah. Which is and awesome. as we're getting into spring and we're getting more sunshine or it's warming up, especially here in North Texas. Well, one of the quotes I pulled from this is this guy Boddington had noticed that people who spent their time indoors were susceptible to tuberculosis, whereas patients should copy the lifestyles of those who appeared immune to tuberculosis. They should live in well-ventilated houses, which is kind of interesting as, as we talked about because – Jake, do you have, especially like your coworkers, how many of them do you think have sheltered in place and have not ventured out much? I could not venture to guess oh. how many, but um, I think uh, probably it's probably up there. It's probably you know the national average. Most mm -hmm. people are doing that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so when the government tells you shelter in place. You go to your house, you shut the door, and you don't come out because now you're scared. Yes. Are you scared? Well, scared people are. Yes, scared people are. That's a good way to put it. So, <laughs> Is it? yes, scared people are scared. Um, you heard it here first. <laughs> Breaking news. Can we be um, honest? <laughs> yes. So, but, you know, I do think it's uh, it's very interesting Um to look at those things and and that to, to have those conversations and you know I, and I'm just not afraid of all this you know I I believe ultimately Yahuwah is in control and I know I've said it but I feel like we've got to keep saying it um, and we appreciate you listening to us by the way but the whole thing of he's taken down the idols he um, you know, he's disrupting people's normal behavior. You know, he took away all the sports. You know, just look at how much sports evaporated. Everything from, we didn't talk about last time, but Little League. All the, you know, that usually is happening this time of year. And all that is gone. Because I know a guy that has a business of making trophies. And he is, like, hurting bad. I was just thinking about I um, drove by the, the trophy mm -hmm. store down here the other day mm -hmm. and I was wondering how that was going you know it's I didn't even realize there was a trophy store there I drove by and like hey I wonder they're probably being affected by this yeah yeah and that's something some side business you don't think much about unless you Maybe are in trophy. the trophy business <laughs> but uh yeah you know the schools needed trophies and they're shut down and all the sports stuff and um but but in concerts, you know, have been shut down, and um, you know, so much of Hollywood and acting and movie production has been shut down. You know, the list just goes on and on about how Yahuwah is taking down these idols. He's taking down churches. You know, there are going to be churches that don't survive this. I, I don't see how. Um, you know, there's going to be. I would assume there's going to be a lot of churches that. Um, if they survive it, they're going to look different when they come out of this because they're going to lose some people. Their pastor's going to have less money. He may be downsizing his, you know, six hundred thousand dollar house um, because the you know there may not be money coming in the way there once was. So there may not be as many butts in the seat because when they reopen, they may only reopen at twenty five percent or something. You know, so um, which 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 is an interesting topic too. Because, you know, what is the role of the 5013C in all this? You know, so um, these churches are forced to play this game. Right. Um, they don't have any other option. It's, it's, it's where they are. They, they have no other option than to um, participate in that. Yeah, they, they're kind of, once you're taking money out of the, you know, essentially taking money from the government, now you're... They can tell you what how, what to do. I mean, you don't want to be in that position where you're ha where you have to depend on mm -hmm. the government to to feed you, and then they tell you what you can eat. Yeah, no. Yeah. Well, and then you know the other thing with it, and um, some of the thought other thoughts I had uh, definitely go along with. You know, look at um, 
even how it's impacting farming. You know, you see these articles where the guys, they're pouring out gallons and gallons of milk, killing, having to kill killing chickens, chickens right. cows, and there's no market for that. And, you know, and a lot of people are like, oh, my goodness, how can they do that? That's terrible. Feed it to the poor people. But you have in, to get it there. Yeah, yeah. Who's, <laughs> is, who's paying to truck it? You know, the farmer, he's going to pay and just uh, just because he's he, yeah, just cause he's a millionaire and he's going to do that. I mean, that's fantastic if he is, but the farmers are pretty much like you and I. You know, they only have so much money and uh, they can't just it's fund. It's everything about money with you, Matt. It Why is. can't we just give <laughs> things away to everybody? Yes. No, there's a just thing make it called, free. Right. There's a thing called a supply chain. Mm. When that's disrupted, then essentially the cities it's a it's a blockade on the cities yeah it's a it's a Ooh, that's a good one that is a very historical uh you know just like in the civil war what did the north do they blockade they the blockaded <laughs> they blockaded the south and so they uh, texas was the point this is texas's role in the civil war let's hear about um it. so texas was what enabled the confederacy to launder money or produce money, you know, however you want to coin it, no pun intended, trademarked, no. <laughs> but they they brought in, uh, they traded cotton, and, and it kind of came through uh, Texas, and then they blockaded Texas, and so they started bringing it up through Mexico, and that made it, it had a long, crazy journey to go from Mexico back around to, like, uh, um places in the south where they had mills and things so that that uh, that was highly effective and so um uh, yeah i hadn't even thought about that but in essence that's what's happened it's a, a giant blockade yep and so i think the other thing that's interesting is you know look at red states versus blue states so i don't know jake i know i sent you a thing the other day did you look at any of that it depends. You send me a lot of things. <laughs> Do the I? other day, I got a message that said, Matt has given you leprosy <laughs> or some such. <side. laughs> oh, what I was talking about the other day was red states versus blue states. And so if you look at, of course, this is the Wikipedia. <clears throat> and then how does that correspond with COVID? Um, uh, well, you got, uh, Northeast coast <clears throat> is usually pretty blue and New York's getting hammered by the COVID. Then you got the California, which is getting pretty hammered by the COVID. You got Seattle, which is where it basically originated. That's a, the first real outbreak was in Seattle that we noticed. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, yeah, it's. It's hard to say there's not a correlation. It's definitely interesting. I think it's something worth talking about and um, <clears throat> examining. And, you know, there is such a divide. Um, and, and, and it's interesting that we see it in COVID because um, there's such a difference between rural and um, urban in the mindset and the people. And, um, you know, it, it reflects from politics to just this this covid business and definitely the sections of town where there's more people for instance we live in outside of a very populated county and um dallas county is one of the more populated counties and we live outside of dallas county and their covid cases are really high yeah and then as you get away from that population center it, it drops and it's just it's not a deal but in the big cities it's a huge deal yeah, and Dallas is, it's a blue county. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now you see all the, uh, all the scuttlebutt with people trying to open their stores and getting, you know, government cracking down on them for it. Yeah. And then there's the COVID, um, you know. The heat just... index. The COVID heat index. And I don't even know how, how current those are, but, but, you know, it was just something I was thinking about, you know, driving around one day, just, just interesting how the red and blue states kind of play a role in all this. And, and there's all kinds of theories floating around there. And, 
you know, I've chased some of those rabbits. Um, and it's interesting, but bottom line, I think once I wrap my mind around, hey, this is from Yahuwah. This is his will. Mm -hmm. This is what he wants. It wouldn't happen if, if he didn't allow it. Yeah, and there's there's a reason. I don't know it. I don't understand it. I don't want the virus. I don't want it to come to my door. But but I think you have to make sure you're prepared and you're ready um, to meet him right. if it does. Uh, not that you know, not that it's necessarily going to go that direction. But you should be prepared. And and we, we started talking about evangelism. So how does that relate to evangelism? What I'm saying there. So <clears throat> one of the yeah, because then there's a lot of people that are out there wondering what what this all means whenever whenever a crisis happens you got people looking for answers and looking for people with answers um and in this case we we talked about how it's the separation of sheep and goats you see people out there that are you know aware of that there that there's that there's just not a lot of truth happening from the loudspeakers and uh but the people that are seeking it out right if you're taking the sheep and goat analogy right you know, a sheep is gonna seek out the truth in this case not the sheeple but you know and then the goats are just gonna be happy off trying to kill themselves like goats do you know do they like, <laughs> do you goat expert I've heard. You've heard. I've heard <laughs> stories about people raising goats, and apparently they they just like to cause trouble. <laughs> so that's going to be the next um, to next podcast we do: goats with a death wish. So exactly. I think we'll make a YouTube video of that. Yeah. So um, I apologize to Peta Finn. Well, well, no animals will be harmed in the making of this production. Right. So, but no, on goats and sheep, somebody has told me before. That uh, sheep are like your own children that come over, and uh, you love them and like them. And then goats are like the neighbor kid whom you hate that comes over, stays too long, plays, breaks everything, makes everyone cry, and drives you nuts and is loud and obnoxious, and pretty much everything they touch gets destroyed or broken, and your children are left crying. Um, that's more like what the goats are like. Okay, I I can go with that. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it is interesting that we have this separation, and and we were talking about evangelism, and do you think there's going to be how do you know it's it's a topic that in Hebrew roots, you know, not that not that we are crazy about saying we're Hebrew roots because when you say Hebrew roots, that sometimes That's a white net. Yeah, because when you know, I'm not saying I don't want to be in the camp that says we got to smoke, burn incense in the temple, and be talking about smoking marijuana. Right. So I'm not interested <laughs> in burning incense in the temple or um, having polygamy. Right. Um, and there, but there are people that call themselves Hebrew roots that are doing some of those things, and and so you know anyway right you, you understand what Left i'm saying the church to get away from denomination yes <laughs> yes and they're trying to follow torah and do torah kind of ways um but we feel like it's kind of been neglected this idea of evangelism and and uh, so you were talking about maybe even some ways it's impacted you at work and things you've seen yeah just that uh uh just one of the shortfalls that i'm seeing in the in the community is we do a lot of reaching out to Christians where there's a, uh, but we don't do a lot of reaching out to, like I was saying, talking to you before about to this, un, the unwashed mass. No, yeah. And, uh, I think I see, I see that void. I don't know what to do about it, but there's, I think that it's easier because most of us are coming from Christianity and so there's a there's a continuity there there's a uh, there's you know relatability I can talk to I can go to a Christian fellow at work and say hey we agree on this this bible 
is, is a good thing we should be following. Now let's discuss what that means, you know, but I mean, that's a much easier conversation at work when you know that you have a good start at uh, the same starting point mm -hmm. than, you know, going to an unwashed, right? Going to someone that you have no similarity on that. It's just, especially maybe, in the work environment, it's hard to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Well, and I think uh, so many friends, and you probably have run into this too, so many friends and family, people that we know that knew us, especially people that knew me before in my church walk, um, they just have such a hard time. They don't really want to, once they kind of figure out how crazy this is to what they do, they don't really want to talk to me, talk about it, bring it up. And uh, they're just like kind of, you know, it's like I've been shunned, and, you know, and that happened so long ago. I don't even hardly remember, yeah. but, um, but, but that seems to be a pretty common thing in that world. It's just, they, they so can't grasp it. They just kind of be like, I'm done with you, I guess. Um, and whereas people that aren't coming into, you know, conversations with us with, with, with uh, religious baggage, they're genuinely curious and interested. A little more open, it seems. Yeah, yeah. Like I've, I've asked people, I had someone ask me about the bracelet that has the Shema on it, a little leather bracelet that I wear sometimes. I don't like to wear it when it's hot and sweaty because yeah. it gets gross. Um, but a, a Zitzi um, and, um, you know, wearing that, I've had people ask about that. And, and uh, especially like non-church going people are like, oh, that's cool. And basically like, that's awesome. That means that to you. Whereas it, from a church person standpoint, it's always, Oh, and then mm -hmm. they, Oh, you're one of those. Yeah. Or you're some, a weirdo. Yeah. It was, it's, yeah, it's funny. It's a lot mm -hmm. more acceptance from someone who has no skin in the game is mm -hmm. essentially is what mm -hmm. it is. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I, I guess we're saying, what are we saying, Jake? We're just talking. <laughs> just talking. That, uh, you know, we're, we're interested. If you have ideas, uh, how, how do you go about this evangelism uh, in this COVID crisis? Is it a crisis? Maybe. I don't know. Well, a manufactured crisis is still a crisis. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But, uh, you know, how, how do we move forward in... Uh, be be ready for answers because I was talking to Jake a minute ago and kind of saying, you know, I believe we're seeing the the beginning of the birth pains. And so, you know, Yeshua talked about how they would come on like a woman and be waves and that the waves would grow stronger in intensity and frequency and closer together, which is kind of interesting because as he talks about that, he's actually talking about science. Yeah. And if you've ever studied sound waves or energy waves, that's, you know, freak, you know, the what's the frequency in our sound? It's like pitch. And volume and frequency, yeah. you know, it's an, you know, um, but anyway, I just think it's kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, what were you going to say? I thought you looked like you were going to say <laughs> something. But, but the, uh, you know, I do think we're seeing the beginning of those, um, of those, and, and it's going to be more frequent. And it is easy to look at this and be angry at Yahuwah or be angry at man, you know, I think. A lot of people in our community are, you know, probably into the conspiracy a little bit. And um, maybe we, some of us, I am certainly the first one to raise my hand and say, I am guilty of this, Jake. And that would be chasing too many conspiracy theories because it's juicy. You yeah. Know, it's fun. It is. It, it is fun. Mm -hmm. It's a, you know, a mental exercise that can be, it can be fun because you're like, ooh, maybe there's, you know, something that. I'm on the cusp of that. Maybe someone else doesn't know or, yeah, yeah. well, this could be true, mm -hmm. you know, and I haven't heard this anywhere else. So I, and it, you know, tickles the ears perhaps. And I think when I was new in Torah, I, I, I really pursued a lot of that stuff heavy. And the, the more, the older I get and the more mature, I guess, in Torah, I guess I'm mature ish going that More direction than <laughs> and I was and um, you know 
I um, I just feel like it can be such a waste of time. And there's so much a Torah, and there's so many connections between Torah in the New Testament and Torah and even Paul. Because I'm not in the camp that says Paul is a heretic, and uh, you should never ever listen to anything Paul says. You know, I, I can't go there. I, I've kind of explored that and looked at it before, but I'm just that's a whole nother topic for another day. <laughs> But um, but there are so many things that he understood on a deep level and that Yeshua understood on a deep level. And the more you read Torah, I believe the more those things open up for you yeah. and the keys get unlocked and you start putting pieces together and you can start to begin to understand what they saw and what they understood. And I think that if we would focus more on that kind of thing than chasing after Q and who is behind COVID <laughs> right. and and um, Wuhan and how that's a conspiracy to kill us. Well, guess what? Newsflash: <laughs> Satan wants to kill us all. <laughs> so, how is this new information? There's a, there's been a conspiracy since Cain killed Abel. That's where it started. Yeah. And uh, and since that moment in time, it's been set in place. And the enemy is trying to kill us, destroy us, maim us, cripple us, whatever he can do. Um, to and he's trying to make God look like a fool, and him, you know, smarter. Or, or you know, you know, I don't even know that I understand all of it, but but I do know that this war started a long time ago. And uh, yeah, I think if you, you know, what we were talking about, Michael Omen. Michael Omen yeah. has a great. Uh, spiritual warfare series and he talked about that in there i've only listened to the first one you've listened to the whole thing but about I'm on the third one third one okay <laughs> about how um so many people have focused more on the enemy in in learning the enemy's playbook than they have yahuwah right yeah and kind of equating them like like there's some level of equality there when yeah. really Scripturally, you know, Satan is Yahweh's servant. He yeah. he does the will of Yahweh also, mm -hmm. um, and he he has to ask for an audience with Yahweh also. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of things that don't really matter in the scheme of things, and I mean. It's not that it doesn't matter. I mean, everything's got a part of the plan, but mm -hmm. but how 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 tore up are you going to get about something that you can't have any effect on? Anything? You have no control. No, yeah, no control over it. No. Yeah. And then, at least, how about this? At least, if you're going to be chasing those 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 rabbits, you know, you you have to make the sound argument. You know, you can't just pull something that aligns with the point you want to make and say, well, you know, this guy's a jerk anyway. We all know that. Mm. And see, he did this here, too. Well, if you give this here, too, some context, maybe it doesn't line up with this guy's a jerk. Right. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't negate the fact that this guy's a jerk or whatever. Mm -hmm. It just ruins your credibility. Because yeah. you're making an argument about something that you haven't vetted, you mm -hmm. haven't checked the sources, you haven't yeah. checked the context, you know. So, anyway, that it's conspiracy day, apparently. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, but, you, you know, and you think about that, too. Uh, yeah, of course, you know, it is it is ridiculous that we get so worked up about some of these people and things they've done. And, you know, the, the they of the world you know, are not people of faith or not our faith. And uh, they're not playing on our uh, the same team usually. And so, can, I mean, of course it's nefarious. Of course it's to benefit them or someone else and not to benefit us. And you know, that, that, scheme, right? that's a given. You know, it is a scheme. You know, you think about the whole wealth creation and stock market and you just name the thing after thing. But, but after saying all that, I do feel like, you know, that's where it comes back to praying that people have their eyes open, you know. And I do pray that people will start to understand to not put their faith 
in the stock market. And I also see a lot of people that put their faith in bullets and put their faith in gold and silver and those kinds of things. And you, you can't go, you can go too far there too. I think you should be prudent and be prepared and be wise. But um, I think you make a mistake if you, if you think that's going to somehow save you and your family, because, right. because all you have to do is put it in context, you know, the minute um, you and your family go against two Black Hawk helicopters how quick is your house going to be blown to smithereens? I mean, I would imagine pretty quickly. Yeah, you can shoot an, your your uh, automatic weapon at it, but uh, when they're shooting Hellfire missiles back at you, it's just yeah, it's going to be like what we see in these uh, in like Afghanistan villages and things where you know there's just no match. But you know they you know it's just it's very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, and and that no, all that is not to say don't be informed about what's going sure. on, right? There's it's clearly important to be informed about what's going on and around you, what's going on in the world, and just don't get the wool pull pulled over your eyes, because uh, yeah, there's nefarious things happening. Be aware of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and and, uh, and I think. You know, I really would ask our listeners to um, uh, to um, to join us in a prayer, and and we, we'd also ask if you have any prayer requests, anything that you'd like us to pray about. Please let us know if there's topics you'd like us to talk about. Um, but uh, but Jake, it may be appropriate to pray um, at this point, and so we I don't think we've done that with the listeners but um but how about it sure and we'll kind of we'll kind of close this current event section in prayer so if you'll uh, pray with me heavenly father we come before you uh, today and we just thank you for uh, health and life and and family and uh, and we thank you for a beautiful spring um, here in um, the part of the world that we're in. And I hope that uh, other people are experiencing pleasant weather as well. And we, we ask uh, that uh, the people that listen to this will be benefited from this and that uh, there will be some good that comes of it. And we just pray that you work through us despite our faults and imperfections. And uh, we and um, but we, we want to really pray for people to have their eyes opened in the world all across America, all across the world that that, you know, we do know that the truth will set us free. And uh, we pray that more people will be set free to the truth, that they won't be blinded by the deception and the misdeeds of mankind. And uh, just pray that you'd help open up their minds to to your truth and to your uh, perfect timing, help them to open their eyes to uh, deception in churches and deception in Christianity and the Christian world and help open their eyes to how churches are businesses and 5013Cs and enable all that and, and, and um, just help people to see the problems that exist there and help them to um, open their eyes to your good and perfect will and what your Torah really says and what following your commandments really means and keeping your Moedim and keeping your Shabbat. And we pray that people will open their eyes to those things. And we pray that things that have been hidden from us will be revealed. And that's everything from spiritual matters to physical matters. Uh, help us to be prepared spiritually to, uh, to meet you. And uh, we look forward to your return. Uh, we do pray that you um, that, that, that you um, we, we, we pray that you come quickly and we pray for repentance. Uh, we want people to come to you before it's too late because one day it will be too late and every knee will bow. We know this and we pray that these knees will bow now um, on their own free will. Um, while they still have a choice before um, before it's too late for them. Help us to be ready and willing with an answer 
for people that we work with, that we know, and we pray especially for our loved ones and our family members that uh, think we're crazy and think that this is uh, just a bunch of hooey and um, just think that uh, we're a little off our rocker. And uh, we pray for for them, that uh, you, and in our relationship with them, help us to maintain those relationships. Help us not to burn bridges. Uh, help us not to be Torah terrorist and... Um, Help us to be careful what we say, when we say it, how we say it. Help us to say things in love and help us to to live like Yeshua did and um, and talk to people and learn his ways and and help us to be dialed into you and ask you for words and ask you for guidance and timing and allow you to speak through us. And uh, we, once again, we thank you for every person that is listening to us and um we pray all these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Well, Jake, uh, do you have anything else to say about current events? Uh, well, currently there's a lot of events going on, Matt. And uh, just keep your eyes open. Yeah. yeah. Keep your eyes open. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for us. And as always, we ask you to you know, check out um, – our Facebook page and uh, the podcast can be found in multiple avenues. Uh, it's in Spotify. It's in iTunes. It's in Podbean, among others. Um, there's a Twitter feed. You can even leave us a voicemail. And I, I want to shout out to DC and uh, DC um, listens and he clicked on this, leave a voicemail, left us a voicemail, and we appreciated making a new friend and a contact. And you can find us on YouTube, and we appreciate um, who, 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 what's the handle on the person we get comments from? Um, we'll get back to you. So I think I know his first name, but I don't know his handle. Yeah, we'll get so, back to you with the handle, but. Um, so, or look it up on your phone real fast. So, um, but we want to give a shout out to uh, to him, and we have an about page where you can um, uh, you can subscribe, you can enter your email address, and I do need to change a couple of things. Like I, I wrote in here, please join me on my journey. But Jake and I are doing this together. Um, there's a message, and uh, there are some people that have responded. Um, and uh, we certainly appreciate their responses. And then um, we, and then so there's a contact page, which is probably kind of like the about page. But um, but uh, we do want you uh, if you have questions, if if you have comments, if you have prayer requests, if there are certain topics that uh, um, that you want to discuss, or if you think we're completely wrong and uh, the biggest uh, fools you've ever heard, you know. Um, we do ask that you be kind. Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, but but we do ask for feedback, and we look forward to hearing back from you. And did you find who we need to give the shout-out to? I don't want to shorthand him. No, I didn't. Oh, Jake. I know it, but I don't have – I don't know it. Well, we uh, want to give a special shout out to Lugnut. Lugnut58. And um, he's definitely uh, been one of our biggest fans, and uh, we wouldn't be where we are today without Lugnut58. That's right. So, so check out his so channel. Check out his channel. If you're a gamer, yeah. um, you can find uh, things about gaming there. So clearly Jake and I are big gamers. Big gamers. <laughs> yes. And but he does some other things too. And soon we will start our own Twitch campaign. So we're asking Lugnut, if you're listening out there, uh, do you think we should uh, Twitch, I think, is what the kids... <laughs> should we Twitch? <laughs> should we Twitch? <laughs> I think you need to know what that is before you start <laughs> maybe, saying it out loud. Maybe maybe. So I know I've heard about it, and my children have talked about it, and we know somebody that has a Twitch channel, and you know him too. And uh, they play games on Twitch, and you watch it and comment and talk. Okay. So um, I don't know what game we would watch and play and talk. Maybe maybe we should start Twitch with Pong 
Ooh. or something like that. <laughs> that would be a good one, I think. <laughs> Lots of lots of discussion going on during pong. Pong or tanks? Uh, we yeah. could we could do tanks. Um, I could I was pretty good at that one. So, um, or Tetris. I can play Tetris. You know, maybe maybe that would be a good one. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really understand that world. I'm not yeah. going to pretend. Yeah. So, yeah. but anyway, we had to give a shout out to Lugnut. Uh, 58 and uh, we appreciate his dedication and loyalty to the show and uh, we appreciate you taking time to stop by and listen uh, and as always we ask you to comment like share subscribe um, you know especially share this with someone that uh, you think might find it interesting and uh, drop us a line. Let us know that you're out there and that there are people that listen to us. So uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.